Okay, we're going to be looking in Galatians 5 at uh, the latter part of it. But what we're kind of doing, sort of, is a series on sin. Because I've heard a lot of people who really don't understand, I think, either what sin is or the consequences of sin. And it's a sad, sad thing. And I want to make this clear as I start that not everything bad that comes into a person's life is because of sin. Well, I, I say that carefully because in the long run, way back, yes, death passed to men because men all sin, um, and it came off of Adam and Eve. So really the bad of the bad really does come from sin. But it's not because I sinned necessarily that something has gone wrong. Okay? What I want to look at today is some of the things, not all of what the Bible says is sin, because that would take way too long. Last week, if you remember, we looked in Ephesians 4, and it was about not sinning. You know, we don't have to sin. We choose to sin. And I suspect that possibly even some here this last week that are here today have sinned. You know, I, I'm not interested in poking into your life enough to know. I mean, that, but it, it's certainly possible that that's the case. And that being said, well, what, what I said, what do we do with sin? And what, how do we go about it? We, we choose, okay, let's say we cho we've chosen to sin. And what do we go, where do we go from there? Eventually I'm going to be looking at the book of Psalms where David was called on his sin and the cost it, that he paid for that sin. And it's very intense, very intense. David was called a man after God's own heart. But he sinned. Oh no. But when that sin was made known, what did he do? He confessed it. Okay, that's what God wants. It doesn't mean that David was a little God or anything like that. That's not at all what it's talking about. What it's talking about is a man who knew what it meant to want to be like God. <clears throat> get that relationship cleaned up. You know, people get the wrong impression of that too often. If he's a man after God's own heart. That means he must be perfect. No, no, that's not at all what it means. I, it just seems like David would have known that his plan for, you know, getting the Uriah guy out in front and all that was a, a sin. I'm sure he did. And he knew it. Yeah, yeah, he did. He did. But it's not like... He chose to Nathan sin just... He, he chose to sin like we choose to sin. You know... And then what, what do we do with it? We hide it. Okay, so now, i, I got to ask the question, what exactly is sin? Think about it. I heard talk just this morning that people don't, you know, they don't want to call it sin. They, and that's really true. But it doesn't change the reality that sin is, in fact, sin. It's not a mistake. It's not a... a whoopsie daisy type of thing I kind of blew that one that was kind of dumb of me that kind of thing that's not it at all people can be dumb and not sin <laughs> it happens I'm, I'm serious it happens that's not what sin is at all so God has laid out a standard and it's God's standard and I don't care what anybody else says about any of it when it says that it's God's standard, that means 
he's the one that gets to set the rules and he's the one that we listen to so we got to determine what God says is sin and then go with that that's kind of what we're going to be looking at today in the book of Galatians this is only one of three main passages in the New Testament that give an example of what not to do but this is one that's pretty inclusive now the sins that are included in this aren't necessarily um, exclusive Okay. Oh, John, welcome. Um, they, they aren't necessarily a, uh, exclusive. What they are is inclusive, and what it does is it brings us into a position of not doing some of the things that these would be part of. Okay. Now, if we if the Bible was to list everything that was a sin, how long would the Bible be? I mean, come on, guys. That's that's a lot of <laughs> that's a lot of stuff. So there are three main types of sin that people find themselves categorically falling into: the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. That's God's words. You know, uh, these are the three categorical areas in which we find ourselves struggling, and I'm sure you do. I'm sure I do. I can say with assurance I do. Now, thankfully, that's not... Just because a person struggles with it doesn't mean that that's a deal breaker. Okay? We've seen people struggle with sins in this church here that it gets bad and then it gets better and then it gets bad and then it gets better and then it gets bad and then it gets better. And, gets gets better. and they may not ever on this side of eternity stop doing some of these things and you know why that is because Satan's good at what he does he knows where he can get you John and you know when the Apostle Paul who was I mean one of the greatest absolutely evangelists I mean yeah. he's saying hey something's bugging me could you take it away and the Lord says my grace is sufficient. Okay. So everybody's got something. It doesn't matter what it is. It could be money. It could be this. It could be that. Satan's like trying to get somebody. There's Terry. Yeah. The Lord. Okay. That's that's true. And we we need to be able to discern what's right and what's wrong. That's right. What enables us to do that? David said it this way. He said, "Your word have I hid in my heart." so I don't have to sin against you. That's what he said. Now how cool is that? Why do we have to sin? We don't. We choose to. If we hide God's word in our heart, and, it, and, and that doesn't just mean memorize it. Okay? Um, I'm going to give an example of what I'm talking about there. Mary, when the angel talked to him, to her uh, about Jesus being born it said that she I don't remember the exact wording but uh, treasured those things in her heart that doesn't mean she memorized what he said <laughs> that means she took it to heart okay, that's what David's talking about how can we not how can we not sin or not choose to sin by getting into God's Word so much that we have it as part of our life. John? Yeah, because in Hebrews it says clearly that the human race, because of the decisions made earlier on, has fallen as a people. Yeah. So what, that's the reason Jesus Christ had to come to earth to anybody who believes in His sacrifice is going to be saved. Yeah, absolutely. So, Okay, Galatians chapter 5, um, verse 15 says this, If you bite and devour one another, be less, beware lest you be consumed by one another. You know, I'm not planning on biting anybody. I, I don't do that. I'm not real fond of people's skin in my mouth that much. Um, 
Yunkers while they were here, I think it was. No, it wasn't Yunkers, it was uh, the other people. Uh, kids? Kids, Orrin and Rosa, had pictures of people that were cannibals at one point. <laughs> That's not really what it's talking about here. Uh, but if my goal is to just lay into you, then what right do I have to do that? Because I have sinned as well. Okay, I, I got to keep going, John. We're going to run out of time if I don't. Uh, if I don't stop sinning, then I have no right really to be pointing my finger at you like you're less than me. Okay, now does that mean like one pastor I heard say, uh, I, I, well, who has the right to tell you you're sinning? No, that's not at all what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is I can't look at, I, I'm going to use you for an example, Pop. I will say he, I, I caught him with some type of sin going on, okay? And I, oh, you're such an evil person because you blah, blah, blah. What about me? What about me? You know, if I'm going to go after him, boy, he can snap back and I'll guarantee you he can come up with things that I haven't done right. You know, so that's that's what it's talking about here. Okay, now, the flesh lusts against the spirit. Why? Because the flesh wants what the flesh wants. We live in a fallen body. Because of sin, we live in a fallen body. Okay, the, this is verse 17. Uh, well, I, I'm going to throw in 16 with it. I say then, walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusts against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to one another, so that you do not do the things that you wish. Who's he writing to? Christians. And he said, they're, they're fighting against each other so that you don't do what you, what you want to do. What is the goal of a real, honest-to-goodness Christian? To be Christ-like, I would suggest. Is this not what we should be trying to do? But this is pretty clear. That fight is going on. Now, who's going to win? Who's going to win? That's the question. And how? Who's going to win and how? The flesh lusts against the spirit. And that's a, a, a key word to it. Lust is always against love. If I lust after something, it is, what can I get from it? What's in it for me? Love is, what can I, how can I help you along the way? Whether it's I don't care what kind of love it is. It's the kind of love that says, if it's real love, it's love. If I, I mean, if I if I didn't love my wife, I wouldn't care whether she was developing as a Christian. If I didn't love my wife, I wouldn't care if she was developing as a wife. You know, all this stuff, and, and th that's not love. People say they fall out of love because this or that happened. Well, that's because you're lusting. You know, you don't any longer get what it was, and so it's lust. You know, and you've lost that lust. Okay, here's what it says here. The flesh lusts against the spirit, spirit against the flesh. These two are contrary to one another so that you do not do the things that you wish. My desire is to be more like Christ, and I don't do that because I'm lusting improperly. Satan comes up to me. Do this. Look what you can get from it. Oh, isn't it nice? I mean, it'll make you feel really good. You know what Scripture tells us about sin? It says that sin is pleasurable for a moment. And it's not wrong. We wouldn't do it if it wasn't something we wanted. We wouldn't do it. I've had Satan come up to me and tempt me with, well, probably one of his cronies. I doubt it was Satan himself, but 
uh, with alcohol and drugs and stuff. And it's like, come on, really? Really? <laughs> That's not a problem. Neither one of those are a problem. <laughs> I can promise you it's not a problem. But he can come up to me with these, with other things and say, well, you know, look at this. And my mind begins to go, you know what, that's not, that's not wrong. You deserve to be angry with that person. Because look what that person did to you. You know, th this kind of thing. You know, that's right. That's right. You deserve to talk about this person behind their back because look what that person has done to you. You know what? You're right. You're right. And you begin to develop these thoughts because Satan knows where he can get you. And he'll send his little cronies out to go get Ruby or to get David or to get John or to get Pastor Stan or Mom, I almost called you Virginia just because of the sake of doing it, but Mom, you know, any of us, you know, coming after us, and he knows where to get us. Okay, now we have some categorical sins. The work of the flesh are evident. The works of the flesh are evident. They are adultery fornication, uncleanness, and lewdness. What is that? Lust of the flesh. Is that not the lust of the flesh? Okay, how far could we take that one thought then? The lust of the flesh. We could go a long ways talking about just the lust of the flesh. Might it be a consumable that we shouldn't be consuming? Could it be gratification we shouldn't be being gratified with? Could it be a possession or things of this nature? I mean, we could go a long ways talking about what that sin is categorically. Remember, the, the flesh lusts against the spirit, the spirit against the flesh. That's key to all this. God's telling us, don't do those things. Satan's telling us, go ahead and do them. Doesn't that ring true all the way back to Eve in the garden? God said, don't eat the fruit of that tree. God, Satan said, you know, you, you, you really can. God didn't say anything really would happen to you. I mean, come on, look at it. It looks really good. Tastes good. Probably tastes great. I think the biggest part that he used was um, that you become God because you'll have the knowledge. Yeah. You know, it, it's, you know, put these thoughts in our heads. And then it's up to us, what do we do with those thoughts? Do we let it propagate and think on it? Because the more we do, the more we're going to want what Satan has to offer. It's just how it works. Let's be honest with ourselves. This is the way sin works. And it's terrible. Okay. Idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, heresies, dissensions, envy, murder, drunkenness, revelries. Part of those are the lust of the eyes. Part of those are the pride of life. And I'll go through and explain some of these. I'm not going to hit on every single one of these because I want to get on to some other stuff that helps us with the outcome of this over in Ephesians once again. Uh, 
selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, envy, those are all uh, lust, lust, uh, the pride of life type sins. Pride of life type sins. The other ones, the uh, uh, let's see. I, I've got to go down through my through my list here. Jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, heresies, envy, murders, drunkenness, revelries, that kind of thing. Those are all the the. Um, Lust of the eyes. I see it. I want it. I deserve it. I'm good to go. They're categorical, John. We're in Galatians? Yeah, Galatians 5. I, I missed, what, one. Galatians 5, chapter. Or, yeah, or verse 18 ish. 20. Okay, okay. Okay, okay um, and, and it's, it's sad that we fall for these kind of things. I hope you understand where I'm kind of going with this. I'm setting a basis for things that are wrong. And you might be thinking, well, I don't do any of that. I'm not adulterous. I'm not uh, doing a lot of these things that... I, I'm not murdering anybody or anything like that. First off, go back and see what Jesus had to say about some of these kind of things and then find out whether you really are or not. And then, second of all, it doesn't matter. Do you sin is the question. I talked to one man in particular for many years trying to get him to understand. And I would ask him, plain and simple, have you ever sinned? Well, yeah. A non-Christian, and he knew he'd sinned. Okay. Well, what do you plan to do about that? Because you're going to stand before God one day. <laughs> I don't know. Well, what if I told you what that what you could do? Do you really know? Yes. <laughs> First thing out of his mouth every time he came to my house was, "What's wrong with the world?" You know what my answer to that every single time was? The weather. No. <laughs> Sin. Sin. That's what's wrong with the world. We have a whole bunch of stuff like that that's going on here. Now, how do we combat that type of sin in our life? I'm going to get a little specific here for just a second. Terry, if I was to ask you how do you combat sin, what would you tell me? Okay, that's one thing. What else? Listen to Christian music. Okay, that's one thing. What the else? Bible. I'm getting that one particular thing here. John? Share the of Christ. Okay. Solve all problems that you believe in. Go over to Ephesians chapter 6. Most of you, I hope this is a passage that you all know. Okay. But this is what we do. You're going to face temptations with the categorical summarization. Okay. You will face these temptations. What do you do with them? Here's the question. Okay. Now, here's what I say is the answer. And the reason why I say this is the answer is because I believe it's what God says is the answer to it. And here we go. Galatians, Ephesians 6, verse 10 says, Finally, brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. How can we be strong in the Lord if we don't know the Lord? You can't. You can't. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against what? The wiles of the devil. What is that? The temptations that you're going to face. put on the whole armor of God so that you can do this. Now, I mentioned before a person who 
I talked to that admitted he sinned, but he didn't know anything about what to do about it. And I told him, and I told him, and I told him, and what was the outcome? I don't know. He got his opportunity. So um, how it turned out, I couldn't begin to tell you. I'm hoping that he had time at night to think about stuff and accepted the work that Christ did on the cross. John, I agree with you 100%. The only, the only redeeming value is the, the cross and its work. Christ died for my sins, was buried, and rose again. You're absolutely right. That's what it all boils down to. Okay. We don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of dark, of the darkness of this age, against the spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. Really? Now who would that be? Satan and his, enemy, and his cronies. That's the enemy. Put on the whole armor of God so you can stand when in fact you're not fighting against somebody. You're fighting against something you can't even see. You can't see something coming up to you and tempting you. All you can do is acknowledge the temptation. Sometimes I wish we were so much like Jesus that we could. Matthew 4, the devil came up to him and told him, he said, you know, all you got to do is just make bread out of these rocks and you'll be good to go. I could see Jesus going, why you little, how you oughta. <laughs> but we can't see that. All we can do is know the difference between what's right and what's wrong okay so now we have uh, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to what to stand what a tremendous thought that is I don't have to fall rather I can stand I can remember how I'll, I'll use you carefully, Terry, as an example. Which Terry? Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, very carefully. Um, I can remember many times when you would call me up and we would be talking. Uh, I, I fell. I did it again. You know, okay, well, you're going to have to get up and start over. And what did I tell you to do? Memorize this passage so that you would know what you needed to do to stand. And that's what he says right here. That's exactly what he says right here. If you want to stand, then you have to put on the whole armor of God because Satan's not in it because it's fun. He's in it because he's evil. <laughs> Stand therefore, having girded your waist with what? Truth. Truth. Start off with the truth. That's the first thing that we need to put on. I've heard people say, well, I do that every morning. I put on the armor of God every morning. Do you, have you sinned since you started doing that? Well, yeah, but then what part are you leaving out? <laughs> because according to Scripture, you do this and you don't have that problem. It's easy to say, but it's harder to do. It's very sometimes difficult. Where do we find the truth? Okay. Okay. Now that's my truth, not your truth. That's your truth, not my truth. What do we say to that? There's only one truth. Okay, perfect. But that's the right answer. It's true if it's, if it's something else. If it's anything beside the truth, then it's not true. 
there are no two truths contradictory one to another. John? Yeah. You just keep on doing it anyhow. The shed blood of Christ stops it if you believe it. Yeah. Uh, we need truth. And then having put on what? The breastplate of righteousness. The breastplate of righteousness. Now, if I'm bent on sin, am I righteous? No. I mean, let's, let's be logical with it. Those two don't go hand in hand. They're opposites one, one of another. So you have categorical sins that we all find ourselves tempted with. Some more than others. Maybe you have a major problem with the pride of life. Maybe you have a major problem with the lust of the flesh. Maybe you have a major problem with the lust of the eyes. But somehow you're being tempted to that regard. And we have truth as our basis, okay? That's the first thing we need to put on. And I don't know that we need to put it on every day. I think we need to put it on and never take it off. That's what we need to do then I don't have quite the opportunity for Satan. Can Satan tempt you at, in, at night? <laughs> yeah. So don't take it off. <laughs> but now we have the breastplate of righteousness. How can I put on the breastplate of righteousness? The only way, Terry. I, I wasn't in here when you said that, but that previous verse before you put it on Galatians, oh, okay, yeah what, you know what it, what I'm just pointing and making, it said this finally bro my brethren be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might yeah and all that all of his uh, military gear what we're going to talk about I guess, yeah it's there, yeah but who puts it on you got to be strong in the Lord yeah and it's not like, oh, well, I think I'll put on this today and maybe that's Of course, wrong. of course. We should have it donned continually because if we don't, just, just, just a quick second, John. If we don't have it on continually, what are we doing to ourselves? We're short cheating our own fight against Satan. John, your thought. Promises are for the believers. Yeah. In other words, there's so many promises. If you don't believe it, you can't receive it. Yeah, you're, you're true, you're true. You're definitely true on that. Um, okay, we've got our waist girded with truth. The only way we can be righteous is to be covered with the blood of Jesus. <coughs> Therefore, that in our alone is our righteousness. Right. His righteousness is the only righteousness that will count. Paul wrote it this way. He said, I'm, I'm not having my own righteousness. You know, that's what we try to do all the time, do we not? We'd self-justify to develop our own self-righteousness. And all these different religions say if you do certain things, you can do, you know, like all you have to do is just do these things. That's, that's religion, John. Yeah. Christianity is not religious. No. People say it is, but they don't know what they're talking about. No. It is completely the opposite of religion. Exactly the opposite of religion. Religion says, I have to do something. That's what religious is. So you earn your way. In the you earn your way. Something. Christianity says, I can't, so I better develop myself a relationship with the one who can. Right. Okay, there's the difference. All right, so we have righteousness on now, and it's his righteousness. Having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. There's one that we have to do. What is the gospel of peace? You've said it twice already, John. What is it? Lord, Lord. Well, it's Christ died for my yeah, sins, and He was buried, and He rose again. Yeah. Okay. If Christ had to shed His blood, I don't have a chance. Of course. Nor would anybody. 
We would have to go by the law, and according to Galatians, you can't go by the law and make it. Race. The works of the law have saved nobody, it says. So how, how do we do it by that? I mean, we have to have the, the blood of Christ, or we are never going to make it. Exactly. Okay. Preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith. Now, what's faith? People say faith is just believing. No, it's not. No, it's not. Believing, I could believe that there's a bridge that crosses over the Klamath River over there. Okay? And I could watch people go go see it, and sure enough, there it is. I could watch people go over, and that's trust. I trust that people can get over that bridge. But until I put my feet on that bridge and begin to walk, I don't have faith in that bridge. It's when I finally get onto that bridge and begin walking that I have faith, and that's what he's talking about here. Um, taking on the shield of faith where I actually grab it and step into that belief I, I, I believe it's there the, the salvific work of Christ is all there for me I believe it and I, I trust it because I've, I've seen well, I grew up in a Christian home and boy my dad and mom they were, they were good Christians you know, all all down the line, much as I can remember, and that kind of. I I trust that I I I I know it's there. I I, I just it's for not. I don't know if it's for me. And I I I have faith that it can do it because it really can. But until I grab that shield and begin to make it mine, I'm not. I, I might have a shield but it's not the shield of faith because I have to believe I have to know and then I have to do something with that to make it a reality and that's faith you come in and you sit down on these chairs you see everybody else sitting down on them unless you're the first one in but a lot of times either dad or I will beat you to that uh, you, you have you see it, you know, you know it, they'll hold you. That, that's good. So hold a fat guy like that, who won't they hold? <laughs> um, and you believe it. Okay. But then you have to think, well, what about me? I see my my. My trust is there because I see somebody sitting on one. I trust those seats. But until I sit down, I haven't experienced the faith that it takes to make it make it mine. And that's what it's really all about. Taking that shield of faith. It's now not just a concept. It's not just something that people think. It's not something that is just ambiguous. It's mine. And now I have faith in this. And it's faith a protector. Results. What's that? Faith produces results. It does. It does. You, you won't have results in anything without faith in whatever it is. I don't care what concept you're working with. But it's no longer a concept when you have faith because now faith says it is mine. There's the difference. Take on the helmet of salvation. Notice where the salvation part of it is. It's on the head. What happens when you pour blood on the head of something? It runs down, does it not? And covers whatever it is. And our salvation is in the blood of Christ. So be covered with the blood of Christ your salvation will be made complete. You'll have something in which to place your faith. You'll have, yeah, I mean, this whole thing just blossoms when you get to that. 
Go ahead. If you believe this word, I mean, the answer is here. Yeah, absolutely. You know, the last part of verse 16, take on the shield, uh, about, take the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. Yeah. Doesn't matter what. Not it is. some. All. And think about that. I, I, I was going to hit on that and I looked at the clock and I didn't know whether I should or not because time is progressing. But um, what else do we have other than, okay, I can trust God's Word. I can get maybe to know a bit of God's Word. But until I really put my faith in God's Word, those darts are going to get through anyhow. I have to have it. I have to have it. So that shield of faith isn't just a... I mean, people spend way too much time talking about the pieces of armor and not their... their what's the other word for it? It's not actually... I'm not talking about standing there with the shield on. I'm talking about faith. You know, that kind of thing. When God told Abraham, take your family and go... Could have said, "Well, I got to be at the bank at nine in the morning." Yeah. Or or Noah, build a boat. I don't. I don't think. Yeah, I'm not sure. Yeah. I don't think. Hundred years down the road, I don't think so. Maybe next time. Yeah. Question. Okay. Who needs all this stuff? Christians to start with. Well, that very first word. You got to be strong in the Lord. If you're a, a believer. You've got all this equipment available for your use to protect yourself. Exactly, exactly. And here, here's the thing, Terry, and you're right, you're right. Here's the thing. A non-Christian doesn't have that access to any of it. And I've said before, Christians are, I mean, non-Christians are only doing what's normal to them. They sin. What of it? I mean, expect it. The only way they cannot sin is to have the Holy Spirit living within them. Then they have that choice. We don't have to sin because we can be fully protected head to foot with God's Word. It says if a Christian falls seven times, he get up seven times. But an unbeliever falls, maybe he get up twice, maybe not. He don't have the power. Yeah, yep. Yeah. There's one more piece that everybody overlooks. And that's communication. Communication. You're out there in combat. Okay. We looked at the three categorical types of sin briefly. I'm hoping eventually to get to the consequence thereof. Uh, but is it, we, I just didn't, didn't come across as ready yet so we need to do some of this other stuff first but anyway we looked at the three categorical types of sin that we will find ourselves being bombarded with with which we are bomb bombarded are there any English teachers here <laughs> I found out that You're Jillian's mom well. is an English teacher <laughs> uh, and I should know better I do have hillbilly in me I can't help it you know I really do. Um, but I'm not calling you a hillbilly and now you passed it on. <laughs> I, I developed it myself, thank you. Um, but we, if we, okay, we're, we're in combat. We're out there being bombarded with all sorts of different sins that could affect us horribly and so often we forget one point of all this that's communication if you're in combat out in the military and you're not and you don't have access to communication with anybody else you're in big trouble you're not going to make it that's kind of the concept with this, and this is one that everybody just skips over like it's not even there. And that's this. It says, Praying always 
with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit. Okay. Praying always. Why? Because our commander-in-chief doesn't want us to be hit and to fall. I was in the military under a commander-in-chief that didn't care a lick about me. I was told specifically that I was less important to them and more expendable than a roll of toilet paper. Word for word. This, I've got a commander-in-chief that says, I love you, and I want you to communicate with me. Wow. <laughs> Just think of that for a second. But it's not all on God. It says this, being watchful. <laughs> being watchful. Be alert. The world needs more alerts. We get a miss. I don't care. <laughs> Being watchful, having your eyes open. You know, when 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 I was going through my basic training, we had to go through a section where um, there were three guys standing in BDUs in some brush, and we were up on a platform. Uh, they were no farther away, if that far, no farther away than Gloria is from me right now. And we had to see them. We had to be alert, keep our eyes open. There were people who didn't see them. They never did see them until they jumped up with their guns, with blanks, of course, and shot. Then they, I mean, they would have been dead for sure. Some of us did see them. Thankfully, I was one that actually, in fact, did see and was able to, you know, get past that point. But Satan's that way. He'll disguise himself to look like the background, so to speak. And you got to be watchful. Now, I'm praying, and I've got my eyes open. But my faith is wavering. What do I do? What do I do? Think on that for a minute. Have you ever had your faith waver? John? I used to be a runner. Okay. And I used to run 10 miles a day for uh -huh. work. And one day I ran 15 miles. And the thing that is, every time there are such things as walls, you reach a point where your body just says, I quit. But you have to dig deep, like Rocky Balboa. You talk about your faith is down deep inside of you. Everything you've got has to come out in your crisis, or otherwise you can't make it. Here, here's what I would suggest, John, and you're right. You're right. Let, let me just, maybe, it, it kind of rephrases it, sort of. Yeah. Okay? Grab a hold of every one of these other pieces of armor and experience them, and your faith will stand. Know the truth. Be, be pre prepared with truth, you know, for one thing. Uh, okay, go ahead. You reach this wall, and, and everything in you says, we can't go past this. Yeah. But it's your faith. Deep, deep down, you've got to pull it out. And then pray for one another. And then pray for one another. So, we have sin. We ought not sin. We looked at that last week. Okay? Now we have three categories of sin today. You know, what do we do about those sins? We put on the armor of God so we don't have to be hit with the temptation to even do them. Am I saying we should go out there and be perfect? Yes. Absolutely. 
Am I expecting we will? Probably not. But you know what I base my stance thereat on? That's a tough one because you, you pull that one out of the English language. I did it and I don't care. I base it on this. That Christ himself said be perfect. And, and God, God said be holy. These are things that we're not asked to do. We're commanded to do. To me, perfection is alignment with Christ. Of course. You get better than that. If we would only do what's right and not choose to sin, the only way Satan can get a hold of me is if I put my armor down and set it aside. That's it. That's the only way he can do it. And these three categories of sin that we fight against, that fight against the Spirit and the Spirit against them become somewhat irrelevant if we have it on, but they're 100% relevant if we don't have them on. Resist the devil and he will flee. James says that clearly. So how do we get away saying, well, I'm a human so I've got to sin I'm saying we, we're human so we do but I don't have to I choose to a non-Christian a non-Christian cannot help but sin right. but a Christian can right. through Christ through Christ of course of course yes that's where the spiritual armor comes in. Galatians 5 is really clear about that sin. Very clear. I'm going to jump back there real quick. and I'm just going to read it, sort of. The flesh lusts against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. These are contrary to one another, so that you do not do the things that you wish. Again, written to Christians. Now the works of the flesh are evident, which are adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, Jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambition, dissensions and heresies, envy, murder, drunkenness, revelries, and the like. <laughs> or, and stuff like that. For all the law is fulfilled in one word, even in this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Of course. Of course. Why? Because it shows... Remember, it's not lust. Sin is caused by lust. I want. It'll make me feel good. But love says nothing of that. But rather, how can I make that person there have a right relationship with God? If How can I make myself have a right relationship with God? How can I help somebody in their relationship with God and this is just the outpouring of love one to another and it goes back to love your, love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind and strength and love your neighbor as yourself we're two minutes two minutes over by that clock and I hope it's right ha, it's right okay um And it's not noon yet. <laughs> okay. Let me summarize this really quick as we end this up. How many of you today would classify yourself as a Christian? I would. Okay. So as a Christian, we don't have to sin. So here's the question. Are you going to go out there and choose to sin? Or are you going to do what's right and don't sin? Uh, that's what I hope, Terry. I know that. Well, uh, well, we don't do it only for that. We do it because we choose to, but yeah. It's tough. It's tough. This is not an easy passage. If you think it's easy to teach, come up here and try it sometime. It's not. Go ahead. By his stripes I am healed. Yeah. Spiritually healed. Yep. Okay, enough of that. We gotta close. 
otherwise we'll be intruding. Lord, thank you for your word. Help us as we go out into a lost world to be the kind of people you want us to be. Help us to be perfect as you are perfect, or to be holy as you are holy. Help us to do what's right. Help us to know what's right and to pursue it. Your word tells us to pursue godliness, and I pray that we would do that. That we would not let anything stand in our way. That we would be all that you would want us to be, and then some. I just thank you for what you're going to do in your name. Amen.